it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking May Faves, the video where I get to share with you all of my favorite skincare and beauty products that made a big impression on me this month. So if you're so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> So first up is the Nine Wishes Hydra Ampule Toner. Now, let me tell you, I have been wanting to try this for literal years. <laughs> So I actually used the serum from this line back in the summer of 2020, I think it was. And I was really impressed with it. Like I fell deeply in love. That was like the serum of the summer of 2020 because it is so hydrating, it's plumping, and it is just the right type of balance for my dehydrated skin while still feeling so breathable and not oppressive. And so I really, really enjoyed that. And I had kind of always had it on my mind that like I wanted to try try the toner because if the serum was so hydrating, well, imagine what the toner was going to be like, right? Um, but you know, you know how it goes sometimes, like you have like a deep, like passion or interest for one product. And then it just like, it just keeps going like further and further down your wish list. And there was a couple times where I almost bought it and then I didn't. And so I was pretty excited because I didn't realize I had some iHerb rewards uh, expiring at the end of this month. They emailed me, they're like, hey, you have like $14, don't forget to use it. And I was like, what? And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna make an order. And I found that they had this toner on iHerb. So I was like, purchase. I was so excited to get this. And by the way, like, I know I've, I've, I've shared this with you guys in the past, but iHerb is a really great place to get K-Beauty products. Um, they ship so, so stinking fast, like as fast as Amazon, really. Um, so I love that this came to my door just a few days later. It feels special. It feels a little bit different than some of my favorite toners because you know, they really do rely on coconut water, which I find to be um, something that does have like a deep replenishing feel for the skin, a really hydrating feel. And then they balance it out with squalane oil. So that's where that kind of that balance and that little bit of like hug it in kind of moisture that feels really good for dehydration. Cause that's really like, that's really like the key to texture with dehydration. You want deep hydration, but then you want that little bit of like, not greasy, not super heavy, but just a little bit of moisture. And that really just kind of like keeps everything in place, which is so important if you're suffering with dehydration. But then when the temperatures start to rise, which they are starting to this month, and I was like so happy because you know that I live in Wisconsin where we have four seasons, but the winters are very long. They're very cold. They're very harsh. And you know me, I don't like that. Uh, I am not made for cold weather, I feel like. Um, I like warm weather. That is when I am just like feel the most alive and happy. I love sunshine. And so it's coming back and it's warm. It's like 75 today. It's amazing. All that being said though, when it does get warm, some of the like the the types of products that have hydration and balance sometimes they don't feel really great on the skin but like this is like i said the the serum was my 2020 um hydration bomb pick this toner i think i don't even know if it's gonna last <laughs> much uh, into the summer quite honestly i'm going through it very very fast but this is just that right texture the toner itself has a little bit of body and just a little bit of slip, which I really enjoy because it, it gives you that plumping sensation. Right on that first step of skincare, there's that little bit of plumping. That's exactly what I want in a summer skincare product, but it's breathable, it's light. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It doesn't feel greasy. And don't be scared by that little bit of squalling in here. I was a little bit, I was like, hmm, in a toner, I'm not sure. But I actually really like it. It doesn't overwhelm my skin. It plays well with like, like my other um, essences and serums that I want to use on top of this, but it just, it just hits that right balance for warm weather without overwhelming my skin, but deeply hydrates it at the same time. It was a long time coming, but um, it did not disappoint me. This reminds me so much of the serum, and this is definitely, uh, like I said, it's going to be a summertime staple for me if the bottle lasts. Next, I want to talk about the Skin 1004 Pro Bio Sika Intensive Ampule. I have to say, Skin 1004, I'm a fan of the brand, you know that. Um, but sometimes they're boring. Like, let's just be honest. Sometimes it doesn't really get you super duper excited because it's like, eh, it's just Centella. Like, it's good Centella. It's quality Centella. It works Centella. 
but it's just Centella. Sometimes it's just Centella and niacinamide. Sometimes it's Centella and PHA, right? So it's like they have very, very minimalistic, very straightforward types of formulas. And even their textures are usually just very thin and watery and light, which is good. Um, they they really excel at um, really lightweight, breathable skincare. But like I said, sometimes, you know, it gets a little boring. So I was kind of excited to see a new kind of point of view from Skin 104 with this product because yes, we have Centella in here. We know they love Centella, but they've fermented the Centella. So that's just in and of itself, it's very exciting. But this serum also has some ceramides in it. It has some other barrier supportive ingredients in here. There's like, a, it, this is not a minimalistic formula. There's more happening. And I find that very, very exciting. And the texture is not that thin watery texture. This actually has a little bit of creaminess to it, which you know I am a sucker for. You get that burst of hydration, but then there's a creaminess, a silkiness to this, uh, an emollient element. It's not oily. You know, it's not really thick and greasy, but there's just that balance that feels so good on the drier areas of my face. The fermented centella in here works really fast. Now with the OG Centella Serum, I'm always saying you have to be consistent with it because it takes a while to show results. It's one of those serums that you will suspect it's not working for you. And when you stop using it, then you'll be like, hey, wait a second, I think I was actually getting benefits because they're slowly fading away now that I'm not using the product. It's that type of serum. The Intensive Pro Bio Sika Ampule is not that type of product. This works really fast. When they fermented the Centella, they really, they really supercharged it. And so I was really, really impressed with that. And the fermentation in here, you know, I've been using a lot of different fermented um, products recently and the, the fermentation here is pretty strong. Like I think you could, I think you could confidently replace like a first essence, like a Galactomyces ferment essence with just this. Like you wouldn't, you can, of course you can use both, but I'm just saying, you know, the benefits of a first essence are very intense on the skin, that fermented benefit. I feel like that's in this bottle. Um, I was really surprised at how quickly, like my skin just looked really healthy with this. Um, I've been using this actually for a while. I have to say I've been sitting on this one because I, I've been testing a lot of products recently, so I always like to give myself enough time to really confidently feel like I know what this is doing for my skin and not get too confused about it. I've been using this since the beginning of April. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a while, and I just I really feel like this works so stinking fast, and that is really living up to the intensive in the name. Um, I think with the fermentation, with the way that this works, um, I think that this is really supercharged Centella, and I was really impressed with it because it's a it's a change, you know. Not dissing Skin 104 at all, but like I was getting a little bit bored maybe um, with the products that I I have and that I've tried and so they, this is like a really interesting new um, sort of phase that they're they're going into with their love for Centella. This is a new take on it and I'm really really enjoying it. So I've been loving the Skin 1004 Ampule for quite a while, more than just this past month, but I have to say um, I recently did change my percentage of tretinoin that I've been using. I have been at 0 0.304 five percent for like ever um, for a long time and I finally made the leap and I have upped my percentage to 0 0.05 percent so when that occurred I was like gotta get my head in the right in the right place right um, I have to just focus on gentle skincare so that's where the next product comes in this is the make cream comfort me panthenol moisture essence and this has been like I know it's called an essence I'm using this like a serum and this has been my uh, serum of choice when I'm using tretinoin because this is so comforting just like the name says comfort me this comforts me my skin is doing well and you know that I have kind of like a set routine there's certain products that I always rely on because I know they just work really well on tretinoin nights and one of those products is the neon modulating glucoside serum which I recently just emptied I do have another bottle but I was like I kind of want to try something else. I kind of want to just like break out of my little routine just a little bit, but I still need a gentle product. And so I was like, I think this would be a good time to start using because I've had this on my radar for a while I've wanted to do. I just recently featured this in this or that. I, I knew I wanted to review this product. And I'm like, I think now it's going to be a really good time to start incorporating this into my routine. And it was perfect. 
the the texture here it's a creamy texture but it's really hydrating at the same time that's kind of been the theme of the products for this month it's like they have a moisture element but they're like really hydrating too it's exactly what my skin needs right now i'm getting a little bit more into my true combination phase with summer and so that deep hydration is really appreciated but that comforting silky moisture that this provides just ah, feels so good on the skin, but it's not heavy. And that's so important because like, especially when you layer up a lot of skincare, you don't want it to get too thick too quickly. And so this isn't thick at all. It just, it's so breathable, but it's so comforting and nourishing at the same time. The moisture, it's not a, it's not an oily type of moisture. It's just really silky and it just, yeah, it just feels amazing. The panthenol in here is really good. There's a good amount of matacasicide in here, and that's a really nice um, ingredient to put alongside of tretinone where you could potentially get inflammation and irritation, matacasicide. It's basically, it's that isolated compound within Centella that really brings the soothing and healing benefits. That with panthenol and a little bit of ceramide NP, chef's kiss, it's the perfect combination. And so I think I have a new tretinoin favorite, which is this one now, it's really surprising. I mean, is it a replacement for modulating glucosides? No, that formula is freaking amazing. And it does a lot of different things for the skin too, but just for a really straightforward, calming, soothing, slightly moisturizing, but also deeply hydrating type of product when I just wanna keep things simple and straight to the point, this has really been fitting the bill. I've been really impressed with this and I'm glad, I'm really glad that I tried it out for this or that, but it is becoming a quite a staple for me lately. So let's talk about the J. Jun Okra Phytomucin Jelly Mask. I did recently feature this in my Phytomucin video. I hope you caught that last week. I had a really fun time diving into Phytomucin. It's really um, an ingredient you wanna think about as like a vegan alternative to snail. It has a lot of the similar properties. It's really hydrating. It's calming, soothing, anti-inflammatory ingredient. And it also has that um, ability, that well-aging ability to support elastin and collagen in the skin. It's really amazing and it can be derived from a lot of different sources. So with the J-Gen line, it's coming from okra. And actually they use a couple of other vegetable uh, sources as well for their phytomucin. And I really love this wash off mask because it is so perfect for warm weather. Um, it's really starting to warm up and like I said, I'm so happy about that, but that definitely does mean some changes in skincare. And so I love that this mask has a calming element to it. Um, it's soothing, it's cooling, it's refreshing, it's really hydrating actually, and it, it kind of imparts like a plumpness to the skin, but it does actually have like a really nice calming effect. And I've been working in my yard a lot lately. That's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> I mean, going from an apartment for so, so long to like owning a home and now having to take care of a yard is definitely like a lifestyle a shift but I've been enjoying it and I recently planted a bunch of herbs like I just started like a little container garden and so I've been spending more time outside and that means more time in the sun um, and that definitely can mean that my skin can feel a little bit hot um, a little bit stressed out I call it like sun stress um, or sun stunned like it just you know what I mean like it just feels a little worn out from being exp exposed to the sun so much so I always like to do replenishing skincare routines after I've been out in the sun. And um, sometimes I do like some anti-inflammation or some um, anti-irritation types of, of skincare too. And so a lot of the wash off masks that I love that calm my skin actually have like a creamier moisturizing type of texture. And that so has a time and place, but like right now is not it. I don't want a really moisturizing wash off mask right now, especially if I've, I've been overheated in the sun, I want something cooling and refreshing. And so that's where this mask really has been my ally recently. I've been reaching for this a lot because it's this pure gel texture. There's no moisture. There's no nothing else going on. It is just hydrating jelly gel. And it feels oh, so cooling, so refreshing, so amazing on the skin. And for a wash off mask, it actually hydrates your skin quite nicely and kind of plumps it up. You know, sometimes you just put a wash off mask on and then when you wash it off, it's like, 
it felt good when it was on, but it didn't really do anything once you're, once it's off your skin. This actually does stuff. This really calms down the skin. It calms redness and in, like that inflammation um, on the skin that you can get from being in the sun for too long cools it on contact, really hydrates it, leaves it really soft, um, and just leaves it feeling better than before you put the mask on. So I've been really, really enjoying it. It's so simple. It's so straightforward and to the point. That's really what I've been valuing though. I mean, like I said, with the Make Cream Essence, I just want something that just is gentle and gets the job done with just the right texture. And that's exactly what this is. So I really like it because it's different in my collection of wash off masks. I don't quite have this texture, but it's really suiting this time and place. And I think I'm probably going to empty this out by the end of the summer because it is an amazing, you know, burst of hydration, a cool drink of water on a hot day. So with summer coming, you might be thinking it's time to shake up your skincare routine. I want to let you know, I do have some consult spots available for the coming month. And I have all different types of offerings available at different price points. I've helped people find their perfect sunscreen. I've helped people build a healing routine for a damaged moisture barrier. And I've helped people find clarity with their skincare routine and with their skincare goals so they can really maximize the products that they're using. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please check it out. There is a link in the description box. You can see the different offerings and find out if it's right for you. So as we wrap up the month of May, I have been thinking so much about a conversation I had with Dr. Nicole Charles on my podcast, The Journey, a self-care podcast. It was all about embodying equity in our personal and professional lives and it was really it was it was so inspiring I am so honored that Dr. Nicole took some time to share her wisdom with our community so if that conversation sounds interesting definitely go check it out when this video comes out that conversation will be live and you can check it out wherever you get your podcasts um, but the conversation really inspired me to ask some questions of myself and um, they're not necessarily easy questions but because I've been thinking about them so much, I do want to share them with you. And maybe if it resonates to invite you to, to ask yourself some questions as well. And the first one was, you know, am I embodying the change that I want to see in the world? Because quite honestly, like I want to change the world. <laughs> I, um, I see so much that I don't like in the world right now. There's so much injustice. There's so much fear. There's so much hatred. There is so much um, uncertainty and instability in our systems right now that really make me afraid. Have I gotten stuck in that? Yes. Am I the change that I want to see in the world? Am I embodying that? Not always. Being completely honest with you, not always. And so that's a tough that's a tough answer to swallow because there are changes that I would like to see in this world, but it definitely is going to start with me, right? And so that question makes me think it's time to recommit, right? Recommit to my cause, recommit to the changes that I want to see, recommit to taking action, recommit to learning and unlearning. So that's like kind of the next question is like, how can I commit to that process? What am I interested in, in learning, like I said, or unlearning, some things require an unlearning process. So whatever your cause is, whatever change, whatever positive impact you want to make, wherever your interest lies, recommit yourself to that. I'm definitely going to. And then not only take that information on, but like share it. Share it with your community, with your family, with your friends, and really promote an open and positive dialogue about what you're learning. Because change starts with us, but it doesn't stop with us. So we really do need to share these things that we're learning. And so that's step number two. That's step, that's the second question is like, what are you interested in? What can you learn and what can you share? And the last question that I wanna leave you with that I am also ruminating on and this is kind of a tough one because it's like, who benefits from our silence? If we're going to be stuck in, in action and, and in fear and paralyzed and not pick the ball back up, right, and recommit ourselves to the change that we want to see, who suffers from us not speaking up, from us not learning and not sharing that information? Ooh, okay. So I am really curious, how was your month? How are you doing? And what were some of your favorite products from May or maybe a lesson that you learned? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you made it all the way to the end of the video and you made it through that whole conversation, 
we have a connection, okay? I really feel it. If you're into skincare, if you're into self-care, come join our community. Please, I'd be so honored if you'd hit subscribe. I release a lot of new videos throughout the week. I do long form videos and shorts as well. So maybe consider turning on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I love you so much. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for making this channel possible because like I could not do this without you. Like I could not keep showing up consistently and making all of these videos for you on YouTube if you weren't here. Like you are what make this possible. And um, I am so eternally grateful that you are here. I love you. I hope that you are healthy, that you are safe. And I can't wait to see you next month in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.